All right, guys, so we're at the shop today. Uh, we're talking about release aids, uh, specifically a hinge. And Zach's gonna go over with me a little bit about shooting a hinge, um, why it can make you a better shooter, and uh, how it can help you even if you shoot, end up shooting a thumb button or index finger later on down the hunting season. So, see what he's got to say. What do you think about a, shooting a hinge compared to my thumb button? I definitely think a hinge is uh, gonna be awesome as far as improving your shooting. Think about long term over the summer you know before season i'm not saying we're going to hunt with this thing um but it's gonna it's gonna change your whole shot routine and your execution is going to be by the time you can master this in a couple months it's going to be it's going to make help you shoot a caliper or a thumb button when you're hunting a whole lot better plus it's going to just totally extend your range uh when you're shooting in the off season you know you want to stretch out make those 100 yard shots it's gonna make a 40 yard shot feel like it's chip shot. So I'm all about switching to a hinge, at least practicing on a hinge and sticking with it. I always try to tell guys, if you can just shoot this thing for a month, you're gonna, I think, if you can get through that initial first couple days that you're like, your mind's freaking out. What, uh, can, what one you got here? So we got here, we got the Scott Advantage. Um, they got a Longhorn, it's basically the same thing. They also have an, uh, a couple other models of a hinge. This is kind of like your just basic starter. It's just good to start. It's pretty simple, real easy to adjust. Um, it's not very complicated, and it'll it'll get you in the head in the right direction and going where you want to go. Just moving to a hinge, so I'm gonna show you how to adjust this thing here. So on the back of the hinge, there's this hole, and what that does, if we look at a hinge, the hinge rotates on a half moon cam. So when we look on this side, we see the bottom of your hook is gonna ride along this this half moon, and when it gets to that edge, it's gonna break. It's gonna break off and that's when your shot's gonna go off. So it's just about impossible to see in a camera, but right here on this half moon, we have a tiny little click. So what's gonna happen is, is as that hook rides to the edge of that half moon, it's gonna click and you can hear it here, hear that click. So what that does is that's kind of like a safety feature. It's gonna let you know that, hey, this thing's about to go. And if you were drawing it and that click happened, you, that's how you would know to let down. So would you recommend somebody having that click in there to start out with, or? I definitely think it's something to stay away from, and I know okay. that sounds bad because you're like, well, I'm gonna punch myself in the face. If you learn how to draw a hinge correctly from the beginning, I mean, you shot this thing a couple times earlier, and you never you never misfired it, right? Was it pretty simple just to? No, it was smooth. It was it's nice. just a technique to doing it. And uh, once you learn that technique, it's super simple. I will say, guys, if you have never fired one before, <laughs> have someone there with you to kind of walk you through it, because there's definitely a couple times I could have pulled through the ceiling if I wasn't paying attention. So yeah, it's definitely different than probably anything else you've ever tried, especially right. with a with a caliper. So what we're going to do is with the Longhorn, like the Scott, you can flip this moon over and shoot it with no click, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to show Tom how to do this. So we're going to the back of the release. Got the Allen head, just twist that. I'm gonna take a punch, and you wanna punch this pin out. Pins out, and we're just gonna take this moon and just flip it over. So the other side of this moon is completely smooth. No click, and you'll be able to rotate it, and at some point you'll just drop off that half moon, and your shot will go, and you'll probably Pee your pants the first time you uh, you do it because you're gonna. Did it feel weird? Yeah. When you did it the first it actually, time. I mean, to be honest, it felt a lot better than what I've been shooting. It right. Felt, I mean. So it's definitely different, though, right? Like you're not. Yeah. It's I something you're not used to. I shot a trigger all last year. Well, since I started shooting, I've shot a trigger. Mm -hmm. um, I played around with a little bit with the thumb button. This is feeling way more comfortable and smoother than the thumb button. So. So now we got our pin back in, and we're just gonna kind of kind of rough set it to where we think. You can adjust how hot or cold this release is by loosening that screw in the back and then rotating this moon. See how we're rotating okay. the moon a little yeah. bit? That adjusts how hot or cold it is. So we're gonna set it kind of hot. Wow, nice. that's pretty easy. You can just, you can adjust it to whatever you want. Absolutely. And then you just tighten up this screw and that holds it in place as to what you set it. Now I'm gonna suggest for most guys, if you're just starting out with a hinge, to set it pretty heavy, you want some you want some movement in the release before it fires because you don't want to get to the point where you feel like, oh, it's about to go. I need to just tap out and, and yank this thing off. You're gonna to want to get to the point where you come back, you come into your anchor, and you feel some movement in this release, and that's gonna help you to train your mind to okay, just let the pin float in the center of the dot. Movement is okay. It's kind, we kind of have this thing. We think that every 
in order to be a top archer, you have to put your pin in the middle and it has to sit there perfectly still. Well, well we're not machines, off. we're not shooting off a bench, we're not shooting a rifle in a vise. It's impossible to do that. The greatest shooters of all time, they all say the same thing. Dude, my pin moves. It's moving. It's just barely moving in the spot. Right. And even if it comes out for a second, it's going back in. So what a hinge helps you to do is realize that pin movement is okay, and you're just going to be bouncing in and out of that circle and floating around it. And this is going to allow you to move while aiming, and but it's going to take some time to retrain your mind to do that. So I say set it a little bit heavy, so you got some, you got some movement in there. You got a little bit of rotation. It might be just a little bit too much. At some point, you don't want to have to rotate it past too much past 90 degrees. So okay. can you see in this camera here? So if we're rotating this thing, okay, we're starting right here. We're gonna rotate it and about right. So there it's firing, it's pretty, it's going past 90 degrees to your face. So what we're gonna do is lighten it up just a little bit. That's a pretty quick adjust too, that's nice. Yep, super. So I'm gonna say that's about where we're gonna should start right there. And you know, one thing that I think a lot of guys have an issue with, they. They say, well, I'm not gonna hunt with a hinge, so why would I shoot a hinge? Okay, and that's that's a fair fair statement. You know, if you're not gonna hunt with it, why would you shoot it? Well, because it's gonna it's gonna help you to learn to make better shots. And a process a shooting has three processes: execution, form, and hold and steady. Alright? So the execution part is just as important as form. You can have awesome form, but if you execute the shot wrong, it screws up everything that you just worked in your form to get to that steadiness. And if you can't hold steady, your execution's gonna be off. If you can't yeah, you don't sense. have the right form, yeah. Yeah. you're not going to hold steady. So this is like the completing the, the third part of that whole sequence of a, of a good shot. And I'm not saying we're going to make awesome 100% shots in the woods on deer at 20 yards bouncing around inside of trees and stuff, but you, that's why we shoot giant broadheads, right? <laughs> and heavy pounders bows so we can make up for our errors. But it's going to help you to learn what a proper shot is going to feel like. And one of the big things that we run into at our shop here is like when guys say, hey, that's 120 bucks, 130 dollars for a release. That's crazy. But think, how much did you spend on that new bow you just pulled off the shelf? About a thousand bucks, <laughs> right? Yeah. How much did you spend on a dozen arrows? Yeah. How much did you just spend on a dozen, or half dozen broadheads? All right. You add up all these things: the gas, your food plots, lease and ground. What's 120 dollars to make everything that comes down to one shot a season? Everything in a season rides on you making that shot on right. that deer. 120 bucks is going to make it that much better. To me, it just it's a no-brainer. It's, it's worth it. Well, cool. That's really helpful information. Let's uh, try her out, see how she does. Let's go. All right, so let's draw this thing back for the first time. Okay, so number one thing, start close. Okay. <laughs> you want to start this thing at like five yards or even closer, guys. You don't want to be trying to have to aim at a small spot. We're just going to basically do a blank fail here. We're going to have Tom hook her up. And one thing you got to remember about these hinges, they're fired on rotation. Okay, so we want to like over extend this thing forward. The town's got him. So we're going to start with this hinge pointed forward and we want to draw all the all the weight of that hinge of the bow while we're drawing it back on basically your pointer finger and your thumb. So you're going to really want to get get down into that deep on that thumb peg. And we're going to have him draw back here and we'll show you how to anchor in and how to fire it. Alright so he comes back he t tilts it up into his face a little bit, flat on the back of his hand, there you go. And now when he gets back, he's going to take his thumb off the peg. That's going to act kind of as like a safety. Now that thing's going to be ready to fire, he's going to put his other finger on there and slowly start putting pressure on that outer finger and rotate that release in a really slow fashion until it fires. Is it a surprise? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve that surprise release. While he's doing that, he's just floating his pin in the center and that release is going to go. So we'll start at five yards here until he gets comfortable and we'll move back in five, 10 yard increments. And pretty soon we're gonna decrease the size of the spot we're aiming at too. You don't wanna start off aiming at a really small spot. You wanna start off something big that your pin can float in. So you did go, let's move back a little bit. All right guys, so we're back at 20 yards here. Tom's gonna take a couple more shots of this thing. So he's got his thumb on the peg, right? Comes back in, turns his hand up into his face a little bit. Guys, anchor point, he's gonna take his thumb off that peg once he's on target put his other ring finger on and just really slowly you can it's almost imperceptible movement it's a slow gradual boom gone was a surprise yep that's it you got it and that went right where his other rails have been doing cool 
All right, guys. Well, I hope those uh, some of those tips and tricks might have helped you. And uh, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Um, I'm pretty excited about my season. This uh, I think it's going to be a big game changer for me. Uh, hopefully, can address some of those target panic issues and get me shooting a little better. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.